Working on a railway, there is one thing and one thing only that is drilled in nearly every day. Safety. Nothing moves without a plan. Everyone working on the track is accounted for and if you were on the track, you had to have a damn good reason for it. I have walked the line I work on myself no less than two occasions. Both of those occasions, someone knew what I were doing, what time I set off, and someone at the other end was alerted of my expected arrival. But occupational health and safety was a very different story when the line I worked on was created. In the earlier days of the railways, little thought was put to the safety of the employees. Passenger safety was paramount to the bosses. After all, passengers that felt safe would travel again. But workers were a different story. Workers would only focus on getting the job done quickly, and while the rules were there, they were not always followed. In the year 1913, over 30,000 workers would either be severely injured or die on the tracks. To put that into perspective, that's 83 people a day. The incident would be logged and in the majority of cases, the cases would be blamed on the workers or by general misadventure. The most dangerous jobs were the shunters. Unclear signals, lack of training and shortcutting essential procedures all contributed to the toll. But the railways were not completely blasé about railway safety and had produced rule books to help their workers stay safe. However, the books were complicated and wordy, and with some men being illiterate or having a poor education, the workers simply found it too confusing. For example, this was an actual rule taken from a rule book from 1898, which read, The servants of the company, the workers, more especially in the working and shunting of trains, must not expose themselves to danger. All are expected to prevent, as far as they possibly can, such exposure on the part of their fellow servants and to spare no opportunity of warning those to, to neglect to take the proper care. While we all understand not exposing themselves to danger, the way the rule was written came across confusing. Even I had to read it twice before I could make any sense of what they were saying. For the up and coming trade unions, these rules were simply not enough. Tens of thousands of its workers were being left maimed or worse. Parliament threatened new laws protecting workers and the railway simply couldn't afford to lose good men to costly mistakes. Something had to be done. Under pressure from these unions, the Great Western Railway took matters into its own. It created and introduced the Great Safety Movement. They started by literally throwing out the old book and starting again. This time, the book, rather than being formal, was a lot more down to earth and attractive to the reader. It took a page from the USA, who had implemented a similar strategy to railway safety a few years before. The railroads across the pond were already seeing results and the Great Western were keen to replicate it. The book was vastly different to anything gone before. Gone were the days of putting the worker in charge of their own safety. This new booklet directed the reader on how to do things correctly in a simple, structured format the reader could understand. It showed, for the first time, illustrations and photos of what to do and what not to do, and more importantly, the consequences. The steps were clear to all what the Great Western Railway wanted them to do, and more importantly, how to do it. The Great Western were well aware of the shortcuts and unsafe habits the workers were using and made a point of using them in their books as well. They showed the workers what not to do and how the behaviour was endangering themselves and to others. Finally, bold text highlighted areas of importance and drew attention to key matters. More importantly, it delivered it on a level everyone could understand. It was down to earth, catchy and straightforward. Its first paragraph in the book is Human lives are cheap, dirt cheap. Men risk them for nothing. They sell them like old crocs. They do, really. Men will take their lives into their hands just to save a few yards walk or to save waiting a minute or two. They'll even do it for fun. No rule book has ever had the gall to start like that and oh boy did it get its workers reading. 
Every one of its 80,000 workers were issued with this new book and its results were staggering. The Great Western also gave every worker a token that they had to keep in their pockets at all times. The token was simple and reminded the workers of their slogan, Is it safe? It's a simple thing, but it was a physical reminder every day of the importance of safety. Now the Great Western could have gate kept their new booklet, but as other railways took notice, the GWR freely shared the booklet and all of its practice with no conditions. They knew this wasn't just a matter of money. The railway really wanted to keep its workers safe, even those that didn't work for them. By 1915, almost all railway companies had adopted this style of campaign. After the success of the General Safety Book, the Great Western followed with other rule books, this time targeting specific roles within the company. They started with the roles that carried the greatest risk, this being shunters and those that worked on the permanent way, and some books didn't just cover rules for operational staff, it covered every aspect of railway life, even how to take care of its uniforms. By the beginning of the 1920s, almost every aspect of the job had rules written in plain English and for everyone to understand. And it was followed up with an impressive poster campaign. British Railways would adopt the same style of books and several versions of the official rule book was made and given to every member of staff. Of course, the numbers of injuries and deaths would not see a downturn overnight. It would take several years to see any form of decrease, but the Great Western's efforts didn't go unnoticed and over time posters and even videos were created to help promote this message. Soon numbers began to decrease and year on year, and as the graph shows, there's been a steady decline and from March 2023 to April 2024, according to the Rail Safety and Standards Board, no workforce related deaths were recorded on the railway. But while this is a fantastic thing, there is still a lot of work to be done. Deaths and injuries amongst the public on the railway, intentional or accidental, is still in the mid hundreds. Just one death is just too high and the need for awareness of the dangers of the line is still an important part of the railway culture today. You can see it everywhere. Almost every station has warning signs de deterring people straying onto the line and the consequences if the rules aren't adhered to. But as times go, the network adapts. Social media has become a huge part of communicating railway safety and uses both shock and awe from real footage and how to behave around the railways in an age-appropriate format. It is hoped that engagement from a young age will help ingrain behaviours as they get older and reduce the number of accidents on the railway to as low as possible. The work on safety will never stop or slow and the more people are aware, the safer everyone will be.